So in this presentation, I'm trying to help you with the connections in a standard three plate looping method, which is commonly used in domestic dwellings. So this uh, ceiling rows and pendant or batten lamp holder has been opened out to expose the terminations. Let's look at those terminations first. The far left hand side has a block of three, which is identified with an N and that's for neutral within the ceiling rows itself. The center block of three is identified with the word loop and has the permanent line connections coming in and out of it. And the far right hand side is usually identified with the letter L, but is actually a switching line conductor. In other ones are one that can give you control over the lamp by turning it on and off. If we look at the top two cables, both left and right hand side, they are the supply coming in and the supply going out. For this, I will suggest the left hand side is the supply coming in and the right takes the supply into another room. So if the supply comes in on the left hand side, it will bring in a permanent neutral connection, which is terminated within the neutral block. It will bring in a permanently connected line conductor, which is connected into the loop terminal in the center, and to bring in a circuit protective conductor terminated into the earth connection within the ceiling rows itself. We can now see that the bottom right hand cable is the one simulated to a switch drop. If we see that the switch is say a one way switch, we can see how the switching conductor goes to the switch and returns. We take a permanent line from the looping terminal in the center and goes down to the one way switch and is commonly connected into the common terminal. We have a switching line conductor returning. In this case, they've used twin and CPC cables and the conductor is blue, but identified both ends with brown sleeving because it isn't a neutral it's a returning switching line conductor and it's terminated in the L terminal which really is for switching line so you have control over the lamp the CPC once again is terminated in the earth terminal within the ceiling rows itself it can be easily altered this switch drop now to a two-way or two-way and intermediate switching the cable which we've shown here for the switch drop for a one-way switch would be identical going down if it was a two-way. So with a two-way switching configuration, the drop to the first switch still is in twin and CPC or twin brown. We show twin and CPC cables here, but the terminations will now not be in common and L1. The terminations coming down will come down into L1 and L2, leaving the common terminal without a connection at the moment. We introduce a three core and CPC cable, which links together L1, L2 and common of the first two-way switch across to L1, L2 and common of the second two-way switch. It will not matter which colors are used in which positions. However, in my college, I like to use black as common. This drawing shows brown as common. And it doesn't matter if your L1 and L2 in the first switch are in L2 and L1 the opposite way around in the other as long as the common cable remains the same. So if you've chosen to use brown common in the three core cable, it must be positioned in the common terminal of the second two-way switch in order for it to function correctly. The cable in the top right now goes into say another room and repeats the process again. It takes a permanent line, neutral and circuit protective conductor into the next ceiling rows and is terminated in the loop terminal for the line the neutral terminal and the earth terminal within the accessory and the process is repeated again. When working in ceiling roses and pendants in domestic dwellings, you may also be faced with cable colors pre-2004. Pre-2004, the line conductor was red, the neutral conductor was black, and as it still is, the circuit protective conductor was identified with green and yellow sleeving. The process is identical, just care must be taken to make sure that you're familiar with both new and old colours when working within ceiling roses and pendants in order that we make the appropriate connections. So in this video presentation we're going to look at the connections for converting a one-way lighting circuit. So in other words, you walk into a room, they say a ceiling rose and pendant or batten lamp holder, and there is one switch that will turn on and off that light. We're going to look how we can convert that to have control via two positions by converting it to two-way switching. 
we can see the current switch drop down from the ceiling rows is in blue, brown and green and yellow. So we've got twin and CPC cable. We remember from a previous presentation that the blue is not a neutral and is a switching line conductor and is identified with brown sleeving at both ends. And we bring down a permanent line connection on the brown conductor, which is connected in common. On operating the switch, it puts a switching line conductor through to L1 and will turn on the lamp in the room. Remember that the switch drop could be in twin brown, Therefore, both conductors are identified already and no sleeving is required. Or in old colours, we could be in red and black, with the black one identified with red sleeving. Or it could be in twin red. The cable that does come down to the switch drop, whichever of the four described it is, in this case it's twin and CPC, remains in place. However, the switch, which is a one-way switch, will need to be removed. We will also need to add a cable in from this switching point to the new switching point in the room and we will need to put two-way switches in both locations. So this will have a two-way switch replacing the one-way at the original position, and the new position within the room will also have a two-way switch. Let's see what that looks like while we add the cable in, and obviously we replace this switch and add a new switch in. The switch shown at the top of this presentation is the one that we originally showed in the first part of the presentation, and still has the cable being a twin and CPC coming into it. The new cable that's been introduced to link together the two switch positions is a three core and CPC. We said in the first part of the presentation, when adding an additional switching point, we would have to change the switch from a one-way switch to a two-way switch. We can see that both switches are two-way switches, comprising of common L1 and L2. So let's have a look at the terminations that are going to be made in our original switch position at the top now, but with a two-way switch. My original twin and CPC cable now is connected brown conductor in L1 and my blue conductor with brown sleeve in L2. It wouldn't matter if they were the other way around, but that's what is shown in the drawing. We've introduced the three core and CPC to link together this two-way switch with the new two-way switch position. The terminations as I would do at college, use black for common, identified also with brown sleeving because it's a switching line conductor. My brown goes in L1 and my grey conductor of the three core goes in L2. When we look at the bottom switch position, as long as we have the correct cable in common, and I've used black for common, and it's shown in the common position with brown sleeving, it wouldn't matter if I have the brown conductor going in L2 or L1 and the grey conductor going L1 or L2. It makes no difference in this switching configuration. However, you can see in the drawing, I've kept it exactly the same, using brown in L1 and our grey conductor identified with brown sleeving in L2. I've now got control from two different positions from my original lighting point. So I've added another switch. In order to add another switch, I've added a three core and CPC cable from my original switch position to my new switch position. I've replaced the front, which was originally a one-way switch, with a two-way switch. And the second switch also has a two-way switch at its position. So with this new configuration, I have control over my lighting point from now two positions. I can turn it on and off from two different positions within the same room. In the final part of this presentation, we're going to look how we could introduce a third switch, making the switching arrangement two-way and intermediate. So let's look at two-way and intermediate switching. For all intents and purposes, it looks as if we've just added a switch in the center here. However, if we had two-way switching, as we did in our previous drawing that I discussed, it would actually be the bottom switch that we've now added in. We've extended it to be three switches. If we look at the top switch, it's still fed with a twin and CPC cable and still has a three core and CPC going on to the next switch position and still is a two-way switch. The three core feeds into our second switch position as it did before, but we've added another three core cable from that position down to what would be our new switch position at the bottom. And we've had to replace the center switch from a two-way switch in our previous two-way drawings now to be an intermediate switch. The two-way switch appears at the end, so at the bottom switch now, which is fed from a three core from the switch above, is a two-way switch. So in real terms from the drawing we just looked at, the two-way switch has moved down a position to be in the bottom. In order to have two-way and intermediate switching, 
the first switch is a two-way switch. You can have as many intermediate switches as you like. I've only shown one in this drawing and then followed by a final two-way switch. So we could have shown 20 intermediate switches as long as the first switch was a two-way and the last switch was a two-way. Let's have a look at the connections in each of the switches now. So let's have a look at the connections in the top switch, which are identical to the ones shown in the previous drawing for two-way and intermediate. We're using black as common, and then we've got brown and brown in L1, one from the twin and CPC and one from the three core. And we've got a blue with a brown sleeving and a gray with a brown sleeving coming out the other connection within the two-way switch. The intermediate switch, the one in the middle now, has a slightly different configuration. The switch itself has four termination points. And the general rule with intermediate switches is a set from a three core will go in the top and a set from the three core will go into the bottom. It wouldn't matter which way around they go as long as a set goes in the top and a set in the bottom. Occasionally manufacturers do them across the side. Um, all the ones I use in my workshop will have a set coming in the top and a set going out the bottom. So from the three core we can see we have a brown and grey from one of the three core and CPCs going into the top and the grey again is identified with brown sleeving. And in the bottom from the other three core we use the brown and grey with the brown sleeve and identified again. These brown and grey conductors connected in the intermediate switch are called strappers. The common is not physically connected into a termination within the switch itself. It is actually joined together. In other words, the black common from the top switch and the black common from the bottom switch are connected together and left in the back of the box of the intermediate switch. I've shown a red through crimp for the connection here, but it also could have been a maintenance free connector to join those two conductors together. And the three core coming out of the intermediate switch down to the final two-way switch has the standard configuration for connecting. In our case, we're using black as common. And we've got brown and grey with brown sleeving connected in L1 and L2. Remembering again, it wouldn't have mattered if brown was in L2 and grey was in L1. The drawing shows them the other way around. So this would give us two-way and intermediate switching of a lighting point. So in other words, there is three positions in which we can turn the light on and off from. However, as stated previously, you could have had as many intermediate switches connected as shown here in this circuit as you'd like to have vastly greater control over the light. So we could have had 10 switches controlling the one light. In this video presentation, we're looking at the practice of taking a supply to a switch. So no longer using the three plate looping method, but this time directly taking a line neutral and CPC down to the switch, making connections at the switch and then taking a cable from the switch up to the lighting point. This is often used where there is a number of lighting points such as LED down lighters in one room. This system can also be converted to a two-way and two-way and intermediate switching as well. The cable bringing in the supply brings a brown permanent line connection which is connected in this case into the common terminal and also a neutral which is into a connection this is a maintenance free connector block in this diagram and also the CPC which is secured in the earth terminal in this case in the back of the box the cable going out that will feed the lighting points has the brown switching line conductor connected in L1 its blue conductor which is a neutral connected with the other neutral from the supply in this case in the maintenance free connector block and the CPC secured also with the other CPCs in the earth terminal itself. So in this system it means we only take one cable up to the lighting point and that would have a switching line, neutral and CPC. However if there was other lighting points in the same room coming on from the same switch you just go from one lighting point to another looping across the switching line, neutral and CPC so all lighting points come on at the same time the switch is thrown. Let's see how we can convert this to two-way switching. So the conductors coming into the top switching point are identical as before. We've got a supply coming in carrying a line, neutral and CPC conductors. And we've also got the one coming out which is the switching line, neutral and CPC. We've replaced the one-way switch now for a two-way switch. And our conductors have been disconnected. Our two brown conductors were previously in common and L1. They've now been reattached to a two-way switch going in L1 and L2. We've introduced a three core cable which connects the two way switch at the top with a new two way switch in position. And we've used black for common 
and we've identified that with brown sleeving. And the other two conductors, it doesn't matter which one goes in L1 and which one goes in L2. So we've used brown and grey, and again the grey conductor has been identified with brown sleeving because the black and grey are both switching line conductors. So we've introduced a three core from the top switch to our new switching position. Both switches are now two-way switches and our connections in our bottom switch are black for common, identified with brown sleeving, and it doesn't matter which way around, we have our brown conductor and our grey identified with brown sleeving into L1 and L2. So now we've achieved two-way switching of our lighting circuit. So now we've got two-way and intermediate switching. Our original switching position now is at the top position and our second switch down was the one that was two-way in our previous presentation. And we've added an extra cable in down to the bottom switch. However, our switching arrangement has changed slightly. The top switch is still a two-way switch. The middle switch is now an intermediate switch and the bottom new switching position is a two-way switch. Remembering the connections in the top switch are identical to previously discussed and the bottom switch are also identical to previously discussed. The black conductor within the intermediate switch on both sides of the through crimp is identified with brown sleeving and is joined together. The three core, either from the top switch coming down or the bottom switch coming up, has its brown and grey conductor either connected in the bottom of the intermediate switch or in the top of the intermediate switch 